So you're looking to go out and shoot your first walk. If you're anything like us, you're completely new to blue water and you don't really know where to start, hopefully we can clear up some things for you. So let's talk gear. You probably started out in the reef game, you know, shooting your snappers and groupers and stuff like that. You probably have something like this. A 50 inch reef gun, you know, nothing special, probably one or two bands on it. Now, for reef fishing, this is great, but the thing with blue water is you want to be able to take the longest shot possible and be 100% confident in your shot. Now, instead of the 50 inch reef gun, maybe you have a, something of at least 110 centimeters in your uh, arsenal. Now, this gun is by no means ideal, but it almost fits the bill, and in the right circumstances, it can get the job done 100%. But you're definitely gonna have to make a few different modifications. It's, it's a great place to start. Now, an ideal gun for shooting Wahoo would probably be something along the lines of this. This is a 63 inch rifle marauder. This thing's a attack driver, I mean, it's amazing. But it comes with three 5 ace bands, and with rigging and everything, it's probably north of a grand. And I do not recommend going out and buying something like this until you know for a fact that, you know, blue water is something that you enjoy and something that you'd like to pursue. All right, guys, so for the rest of your gear, you're definitely looking at using a breakaway. This is a Neptonics breakaway. You could find them online, 80 to 100 feet of line and at least a one to three atmosphere float. I recommend, you know, the larger the float you can get the better, but a one will get you started. All right, so your last piece of gear that you're gonna really require is a flasher rig. So a flasher rig, I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube before, but it's essentially just a buoy attached onto a string of reflective uh, discs or plates. Um, and typically at the bottom of them you have something what's called a buzz bomb and this will come up and down and do the wahoo and the shards and just everything really comes up to check it out and it's really cool. Alright guys, so we wanted to show you some of the footage we took while diving for wahoo and kind of point out a few things that we learned. Um, this first thing we learned actually doesn't have to do with wahoo much at all but we were diving in about 90 foot of water, a little shallow um, and we had tons of life and we actually had this grouper come way up off the bottom and I had shot him and because I was shooting the the big gun with the triple wrap and the breakaway after I shot him he had enough line that he could get tangled up in the bottom um, so this is actually my personal best dive it's right in about 86 feet so here's this grouper he just slightly got under there I thought I had got a better shot on him so I could just pull him out but he was still pretty lively so here I am I'm just trying to pull him out I'm not trying to stay on the bottom too long because definitely not super comfortable I had taken extra weight out of my weight belt made sure my brother was right on top of me um, keeping an eye on me making sure I got back up and yeah we got this fish and it was pretty cool personal best dive and got pretty nice sized grouper out of it. There's Justin checking out, making trim. Okay, that's his friend Tyler there. More on him in a minute. So here's something that you don't want to happen with a wahoo. So we're diving to hatch reefs, so we were diving for wahoo and it just did not happen. But So first of all, right there I pulled the trigger and the gun had its safety on. So really make sure you don't want that to happen with a wahoo. Anyways, I shoot this small mackerel but you see where I got them hit right in that neck area super soft and they pull right out and that happens with mackerel and with wahoo so that's something you really don't want to happen so this is actually the first time I saw wahoo in the water so right out in front of me just off the tip of my gun you can see two of them just barely and they're, they're swimming away from me. I had taken a dive that I probably shouldn't have and I was chasing them. <laughs> Big mistake. So they really didn't let me get any closer and it was my first time seeing them in the water so I took a shot. Of course I missed but you know I wasn't about to not shoot. There I am. Actually this is Tyler's view. I'm going after him. You can see I'm right under Tyler chasing these fish. So Tyler's still on the surface. He has some time to get over top of them. And you can just barely see them there. 
Yeah, right, right there. You can barely see him. So Tyler's trying to get on top of him, which is good. Um, he's breathing up. Little background on Tyler. He's not the most experienced diver. This was actually his first time diving in blue water. But anyways, he's diving straight down on this fish. You can see a little bit of indecision there, and he goes for this other fish because it was not so deep, and then just wasn't close enough. He could have gotten those fish, it's just, you know, didn't quite get close enough, and, you know, he really wasn't extremely comfortable in the water. But that's the thing, is you really want to make sure you don't miss your chances. This actually wasn't a wahoo, it's a mackerel, and it's another fish that, <laughs> Tyler, you see there. He actually hit it, but, like, just, just didn't get enough of them to, to stick. So here I am, I'm shaking the flashers up, got a jug here full of chum, we're just kind of just slow chumming it. Justin goes down and there he is, there's the wahoo. Justin got to dive straight down on him, wahoo kind of spins away, he takes a shot, and you can see him take it off. Make sure he's free of the line and there goes the buoy. Sometimes it's as simple as that, they come right in, you take a quick 15 foot dive, and take a pretty easy shot and it happens, but... Here he is pulling up the fish. One thing to note, look at all the life there. You know you're you're gonna get into some fish when you have that much life around. He's being real careful with it. He had one other wahoo tear off, he didn't have any footage of it, but here he comes. So this is Justin's first wahoo. You can see all the, the amberjacks circling around it. I actually thought it was sharks when it was deeper, but I go down and get a second shot, but Justin's just ready to get it in hand, so. Yeah, hey, come get us! It. Look at all that life there, that's just really, really what brought him in. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> buoy off the reef there, that's what we were, we were diving. Are you kidding me? <laughs> a little bit excited. Yeah, you can see how close we are to those other boats. You really just gotta watch out. Hey man, we're sorry. We didn't mean to get in your, really your way. Everybody's it's just the out fish there. Ran over we're real sorry. Fish dive. We'll be so out of here in a second. Yourself. But yeah, I hope you guys learned a little bit from what we learned trying to get our first Wahoo. We definitely put in a lot of time, but yeah, it was all all worth it in the end. And coming into the next season, we'll definitely know a lot more and know where to start. I hope we can share that with you guys so you don't have to go through quite as much pain and suffering as we did you just knew it was gonna happen. first ten or so trips. You just but. knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> Wahoo 18 plus one. Yeah! Now that we have the gear, we can talk about where to dive for Wahoo. We've heard that the best places to dive are between 90 and 300 feet over structure that holds bait. Wrecks and deep reefs are a great place to start. The next step is to spend time in the water. When we first started diving for Wahoo, we went several trips without seeing a single one. The water this time of year is cold, and really it's just not fun sitting there in the water for hours on end when you're not seeing anything. But you really just have to suffer through it until you come across the right school. Our next piece of advice is to only unload your gun when you're ready to. The last thing you want to do is unload your gun on a trigger fish out of boredom and on your way up see a pot of wahoo, like I did. Resist the urge to shoot the first fish that swims into your spread unless you would be okay with missing a wahoo due to that fish. The type of water conditions we look for are clear blue water that's in the Gulf Stream. Typically you can tell because the water temperature jumps up. Water in the bay this time of year is in the 60s, but water in the Gulf Stream is in the low 70s. So if the water temperature is really cold, you know that it's probably not even a good time to be going for Wahoo anyways. So you're looking for clear water, you're looking for warm water, and you're looking for water that's moving. You want like a one, one and a half mile an hour current. If the water's going too fast, your drifts are going to be too short and we often didn't see any Wahoo. But if your drifts are too slow, the Gulf Stream's not in and you're not really going to see any. You know you're getting into Wahoo territory when you start to have bait fish around your flashers. Keep working your flashers and keep your eyes out. If you see a Wahoo, don't panic. Throw your flasher past you so that the Wahoo have to swim by to get it. Take your time and slowly swim at an angle to the fish. Don't directly swim towards it as that spooks them a bit. 
get as close as you can. When you think you're close enough, get closer. Look for the white in their eyes and then make your shot. Where do you aim? We've heard that shooting them in the tail is a good holding shot, but if you have to, go for the head shot. Try to avoid the soft flesh in the neck area of the fish. If you hit the fish, let them take the float, but keep it in sight. Throw your gun in the boat and follow the line until the fish finishes its run. Then gently pull him up while keeping the line away from you. If he goes to run again, let him take the line. The last thing you want is to let the fish pull off after you finally get a shot on one. Alright guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos.